Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless when the deception comes if you're not a born again believer you'll be swept away with it the deception will be greater than you ever imagined in your life it is going to be profound as to what happens people in the high places are Satanist, they're Illuminati. Spiritual power in high places that will bring about a one world government. And by doing that, they intend to rule the world. And they have the help of a whole uh, mass of demonic spirits who are able to perform all kinds of miracles, deceptive miracles, manifestations and all of this stuff to help them to bring about that one world government and the goal is so that they can put one man up and worship him as God the Antichrist the media are working overtime to get you wound up about nonsense and it's all a sideshow so don't take your eye off the ball today what matters is understanding two camps that make up America's stark divide now, on the one side, we have what the angle calls the regime. It's a coalition of Democrats, Republicans, the media, and certain portions of the business community, all of whom are committed to an agenda that empowers the super rich in various international organizations. Now, the stakes for the country couldn't be higher. Gallup just released results of an eye-opening poll. It asked, what do you think is the most important problem facing this country today? 10% said the economy. 11% said immigration, 15% said inflation, and topping the list, 21% said the government and poor leadership is the major problem. More Americans say the federal government, which is supposed to be working for us, is the biggest problem out there. And the other problems, like high prices, are caused by the reckless government policies. So why are we all surprised? It makes perfect sense to the angle, because for the regime, the federal bureaucracy exists to carry out its policies, no matter who the voters elect. So if we pick someone like a Trump or a DeSantis, the regime will expect federal bureaucrats to do everything possible to undermine that president, to prevent any significant changes to the regime's policies. On the other hand, when we have a President Biden, the regime will move forward with measures that are so patently illegal. And of course, the regime wants open borders. We just talked about this because they believe that it is immoral for the United States to deny entry to anyone who wants to come here. For the regime defending Europe, though, that's the top foreign policy goal for the United States. Europe is the heart of globalization, after all. It's the home to the European Union, the World Trade Organization, the World Health Organization, and countless other outposts of globalization. The Antichrist will control a one world government, as we read in Revelation 13, 7. It was granted to him, the Antichrist, to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation, which is the world. They're all opposed to the primacy of the nation state, our sovereignty. And believe me, they all speak the same language. What we are about is standing up for um, basic principles, basic rights, and a rules-based international order. A lot of people would like to see there, there are two orders in this world. This is a huge mistake. We need a single global order. The New World Order is a group of elitist people bent on ruling the world through a single worldwide system of government. The appeal of this New World Order lies in its proposal to free the world of wars and political strife and its promise to eradicate poverty, disease, and hunger. Its purpose is to meet the needs and hopes of all mankind through worldwide peace. This new world order will supposedly do away with the need for diverse world governments. This will be accomplished 
by the installation of a one-world political system. The New World Order will emphasize tolerance through the promotion and acceptance of other cultures and their values and ideologies. Its ultimate goal is a sense of unity and oneness with all people. Other objectives include the use of a single worldwide currency, as well as oneness in politics, religion, and moral values. The New World Order will promise worldwide peace, the absence of war, and the elimination of all political unrest. The problem with the acceptance and approval of any New World Order is that no government has ever offered, nor will it ever offer, real hope and peace for mankind. Those who desire the ushering in of a New World Order are in for a rude awakening. Only heaven brings lasting peace and happiness. The Bible makes it very clear that all things associated with his life on earth, with his sufferings, its decay, its discontent, and death, will continue with this physical life as we read in 2 Corinthians 4.16. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Although our physical bodies are growing older, and we notice that our outer man is progressively decaying and wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day after day. The new life we received at salvation is being transformed into the image and likeness of Christ as we mature in the faith, grow in grace, and gain a more intimate knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The one hope for all believers lies only in heaven, as we read in John 14, 1-4. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. It is the hope of heaven we need, not the false hope of a new world order, as the world is not our home, as we read in Philippians 3.20. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. The regime also sees Europe as the model for our future. A technocratic state where elections don't carry much weight and most policy decisions are made by unelected bureaucrats. So from their perspective, Europe cannot be allowed to fail. We will be with the Ukrainian people for as long as it takes for them to defend themselves. As I told President Zelensky when he was here, we're with you for as long as it takes. As long as it takes, no matter what it costs, even to the point of risking nuclear war. It's always America first, Europe first, excuse me, and Americans last. The most prophetic event to happen in the 20th century was the regathering of the Jewish people to their ancient homeland in the Middle East, resulting in the creation of the nation of Israel on May 14, 1948. The second most prophetic event was the formation of the European Union. Both of these prophetic events point to the fact that we are living in the end times, right on the threshold of the tribulation and the Lord's return. The book of Daniel tells us a unified Europe will rise in the end times out of the ashes of the old Roman Empire. The book of Daniel also tells us the Antichrist arises from this end times revived Roman Empire. The book of Daniel chapters 2 and 7 is where a unified European sign is revealed. The book of Daniel chapter 9 verse 26 is where we learn where the Antichrist arises from. And after the 62 weeks Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with the flood, until the end of the war desolations are determined. The people spoken of are the Romans who destroyed the temple in 70 AD. The prince who is to come is the Antichrist. Since we know the people who destroyed the city, Jerusalem, and the sanctuary, the second temple, are the Romans, and the prince who is to come, the Antichrist, is of the Roman people, we know that the Antichrist comes from and will head the last Gentile empire in world history, a revived Roman Empire. The prophecies given to Daniel in these chapters relate to the latter days, as we read in Daniel 2.28. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets, and he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days. Daniel's prophecies are based upon a dream which God gave to King Nebuchadnezzar. Interpreting that dream, Daniel concluded that it revealed the succession of Gentile empires beginning with the Babylonian Empire, followed by Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, and a revived Roman Empire. The last Gentile world empire will be a confederation of nations that will arise out of the old Roman Empire. And out of that confederation, the Antichrist will arise, using the revived Roman Empire as his base to conquer the world. 
But this final Gentile empire will be short-lived, for it will be suddenly crushed by the return of the Messiah, who will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed. It seems as though we are witnessing the fulfillment of these ancient prophecies of Daniel right before our very eyes. The regime knows that people whose hope lies in heaven and who pay more attention to the Bible than to the media aren't easily manipulated or bossed around. This is why they seek to upend traditional institutions like law enforcement, the military, and the nuclear family. While the image of the nuclear family is often held up as the ideal and only form a family can take, whether or not that's true seems to vary by social group and region. It's important to remember whatever form, shape, or size it takes, we have the power to define what family should look like for ourselves. And of course, anti-American propaganda is their lifeblood, which the populists are working to expose, especially parents fighting the radicalism in our schools today. So all these policy differences that I laid out, they're big, they're serious. And as we ramp up for 2024, they should be our focus. We can plainly see the stage is being set for the Antichrist to take his place on the world stage. What will be the trigger that enables the Antichrist to become the leader of the one world government, forcing all people to take his mark and to be worshiped as God? When is the rapture going to happen in relation to the tribulation? The timing of the rapture in relation to the tribulation is one of the most controversial issues in the church today. There are four views on the timing of the rapture. The pre-tribulation view, where the rapture occurs before the tribulation starts. The pre-wrath view, where the rapture happens before the great day of wrath in Revelation 6, 17. The mid-tribulation view, where the rapture occurs at or near the midpoint of the tribulation. And the post-tribulation view, where the rapture occurs at the end of the tribulation. The primary scripture passage on the rapture is in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. It states that all living believers, along with all believers who have died, will meet the Lord Jesus in the air and will be with him forever. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. A few verses later, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, Paul says, For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord, Jesus Christ. The book of Revelation, which deals primarily with the time period of the tribulation, is a prophetic message of how God will pour out his wrath upon an unbelieving and unrepentant world. It seems inconsistent for God to promise believers that they will not suffer wrath and then lead them on the earth to suffer through his anger during the tribulation. Another passage on the timing of the rapture is in Revelation 3.10. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world, to test those who dwell on the earth. Christ promises to deliver believers from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole earth. This could mean two things. Either Christ will protect believers in the midst of the trials, or he will deliver believers out of the trials. It is important to recognize what believers are promised to be kept from. It is not just the trial, but the hour of trial. Christ is promising to keep believers from a specific time period that contains the trials, namely the tribulation. The purpose of the tribulation, the purpose of the rapture, the meaning of 1 Thessalonians 5.9, and the interpretation of Revelation 3.10 all give clear support to the pre-tribulation position. If the Bible is interpreted literally and consistently, the pre-tribulation position is the most biblically based interpretation. Another good reason for a pre-tribulation rapture is the tribulation is called the time of Jacob's trouble as we read in Jeremiah 37. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it, and it is the time of Jacob's trouble but he shall be saved out of it. The tribulation is primarily for the salvation of the Jewish nation of Israel 
as God renames Jacob Israel, as we read in Genesis 32:28. And he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have struggled with God and with men, and have prevailed. After the rapture, the age of grace has ended, and God shifts his focus back to the Jews as he promised to save a remnant of them, as we read in Zechariah 13, 8 and 9. And it shall come to pass in all the land, says the Lord, that two-thirds in it shall be cut off and die, but one-third shall be left in it. I will bring the one-third through the fire, will refine them as silver is refined, and test them as gold is tested. They will call on my name, and I will answer them. I will say, This is my people, and each one will say, The Lord is my God. The coming seven-year tribulation is for the salvation of the Jewish nation, in which the Jewish people will look on me whom they have pierced, and they will mourn for him, as one mourns for an only son, and they will weep bitterly over him, like the bitter weeping over a firstborn. They will receive Yeshua as their Messiah, and they will cry out, Baruch haba b'shem Adne, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Whatever we believe about the timing of the rapture, there are two realities all Christians must keep in mind. First, no difference of opinion among Christians justifies unkindness or hostility toward those who hold different views. Jesus commands us to love one another, just as he loved us. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. John 15, 12. Jesus also said that by our love for one another, all people would know that we are his disciples, as we read in John 13, 34, and 35. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Wrangling and name-calling over issues such as the timing of the rapture does not exhibit Christ's love. 1 Timothy 6, 3-5 If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which accords with godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words, from which come envy, strife, reviling, evil suspicions, useless wranglings of men, of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. From such, withdraw yourself. Hebrews 10, 23-25 Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another, in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Brothers and sisters, no matter what our view may be on the timing of the rapture, we must exhort one another as we see the day of the Lord approaching. One day Jesus is coming. You may be at church, you may be at work, you may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! place and I don't want you to go there. We've been reporting on the bizarre phenomenon that seems to be taking place not just in this country, but all over the world. Getting angry at God isn't going to solve anything. Don't but damn me, young lady. I done said you can see that boy when we get to church. This is not the way it's supposed to be. Breaking news, there appears to be 
a rash of catastrophic incidents taking place across the state. Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then Jesus said, I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Este ha sido una mañana muy espantosa de un catástrofe después del otro. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So robes and positions and titles and classifications and auxiliaries and departments and works and paying your tithe and paying your dues will not save you. We are still experiencing the aftershocks of the massive earthquake that have devastated this entire region. But if you want to be raptured, you must be born again. Citizens of South Korea, we're here one moment and going the next. You must be washed in the blood of the Lamb. It's over! We've all been left behind! It's going to be joyful for those who are raptured, but it's going to be sad for those who are left behind. Life, life as we know it. You swore to me that you were going to get yourself together and start coming to church with me. Not today, okay? I'll go with you next Sunday. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A, admit that you're a sinner. B, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C, call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive in faith the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation. Repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.